Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and this is my hopefully not too rambling review of The Arm of the Starfish by Madeline Langle. The Arm of the Starfish was published in 1965 and is about a 17 year old boy named Adam Eddington who wants to be a marine biologist. He gets the summer internship of a lifetime when he is personally recommended to go work for the prestigious Dr. Calvin O'Keefe on his starfish experiments in Portugal. But for Adam, it very quickly turns into something more serious. While he's in New York City waiting for his flight to Lisbon, this young woman named Callie just kind of randomly bumps into him and warns him about two people on his flight named Canon Tallis and Polly O'Keefe, and she tells him to not trust Dr. O'Keefe. Instead, he should trust her and her father, Typhon Cutter. When Adam actually gets on the plane and he meets Canon Tallis and Polly and they know who he is, they don't seem like bad people in any way. Things start to get weird, though, when their plane is not allowed to land in Lisbon because of weather conditions, they're sent on to Madrid, and in Madrid, Canon Talis has to leave and go on to Geneva, and he puts Polly in the care of Adam, implying that Adam really does need to take care of her, something serious might happen to her. While they're on the plane, Polly gets up to go use the restroom in the back of the plane, and then she disappears. Dr. O'Keefe is experimenting on how starfish regenerate their limbs, and he has successfully gotten organs to regenerate in other types of animals, and that is where the conflict in the story comes from. Adam is torn between two sides. The side of Polly O'Keefe, Dr. O'Keefe, who believe that uh, scientific discovery needs to be tested and made safe before it is applied to human beings and that once it is released out to the world to be beneficial it should benefit everybody and not just the privileged few. The other side is the side of Typhon Cutter and his daughter Callie who just want to steal the scientific results so that they can sell it and make a boatload of money for themselves and they don't care that there are side effects to this discovery that it's very likely that people would, you know, have deformities or tumors instead of actually regenerating their lost limbs. This book, like a lot of the other books by Madeline Langle I have reread so far this year, is an interesting meshing of faith just in general, belief just in general, and science. As a child, when I read these books for the first time, I was quite oblivious to all the religious aspects of this book and in the other books, but as an adult, I notice a lot more. It's something that never really leaves my mind while I'm reading the story, but I don't want to say it's a bad thing because it's not judgmental, it's not preachy, and when things are said or done, it feels very natural for the characters to say and do those things, not forced into the story and not forced on you as the reader. I think that the message could very roughly and be um, kind of translated that believing in something greater than yourself, um, whether that is God or an ideal, makes you um, perhaps a better person and in the case of people like uh, Dr. O'Keefe and Adam makes you a, a better, more compassionate scientist. There is a poem in this um, that Joshua, when he meets Adam and, and he's trying to explain to Adam what is going on, he quotes him this stanza from a Robert Frost poem called Two Tramps in Mud Time. It is, But yield who will to their separation. My object in living is to unite my avocation and my vocation as my two eyes make one in sight. Only where love and need are one and the work is play for mortal stakes is the deed ever really done for heaven and the future's sakes. And then he goes on to say to Adam, I'm not sure about heaven, but I do feel I have to do my best for the future, and if you're any kind of scientist, you will too. And that, I think, that is exactly what this book is about. The lines about um, uniting my avocation and my vocation, and only where love and need are one. That, that is what this book is about.
I want to know what my like 11 or 12 year old self thought this book was about because I think that a lot of the stuff about scientific ethics, um, research ethics, and, and testing on human beings went straight over my head when I was a kid, whereas now as an adult, I know that it is a thing. And it's interesting to read a book written in 1965, only about 20 years after things like the bombing, the atomic bombs, World War II, the atrocities in the Holocaust, and of course decades after things like the, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, um, that it's, it's written probably in the middle of the time when the code of ethics for testing on humans was, was being created. So when Madeline Engel is writing this book about how to be an ethical human being when you're also a scientist, she was writing probably in a time where this sort of thing was absolutely not taken for granted. I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. It would have been extremely easy to give this 4 or 5 stars because I have such fond memories of the time of my life when I read it for the first time, but I gave it 3 out of 5 stars because while I was reading it, it felt a little slow and it got a little bit repetitive for me, I think. Uh, the most exciting stuff that happens isn't about the last 70 pages. The real value of this book didn't become very clear to me until I sat down to do this review and I started thinking about the content and the themes in it and I realized this is a lot more than I initially thought it was. If you have never read Madeline Lingle before, I'm not sure I'd recommend this as the first book that you pick up by her. Obviously, I would have to recommend her Wrinkle in Time series first. It is her most famous work, but if you've already read those books and you want something else by Lengel, pick this one up or pick up one of the Austin books. Her stories are good, the content is good, and the subject matter, I think, is, is always going to be relevant. That is everything I have for this review. If you have read Madeline Lengel, please tell me in the comments. I don't think I have seen any book other than A Wrinkle in Time mentioned on booktube, so I would I would love to talk about her more, um, and of course the Polly O'Keefe books if you have read them. Um, so that's it for me this time, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Why am I always so conflicted?